Greetings one and all, this is your host Grudgel again with another Fallout 4 video. We're still at the Red Rocket just outside of Sanctuary Hills. And today we're going to be looking at the shopping plaza portion of my settlement. I use the All Settlements Extended mod, so therefore I have a larger build area than normal. And if you saw my preview video, you know that my intention was to make this, especially the area across the street from the Red Rocket, this area, more commercially zoned and would have businesses. So today we're going to be taking a look at the three shops that comprise my shopping plaza, as well as a little bit of a look at an area I call Minuteman Park, which should be self-explanatory. I'm sure you're all familiar with it. Now, I already have a separate video for my Red Rocket build itself, and that includes some bonus areas. For example, the warehouse to the side of it and the inn upstairs. Now, I've got a Drumlin Diner across the street because this whole area is zoned commercially, like I said, between Concord and Sanctuary Hills. So there's a Drumlin Diner, a, par a two-level parking garage, and a three-shop shopping plaza, as well as a small park and a bus stop. The bus stop comes from a mod. The Drumlin Diner is almost complete, and that'll be in an upcoming video. I already have a video out for the two-level parking garage and, it's, and how it's been repurposed into an apartment complex. This bus stop, like I said, comes from a mod called Takahashi Brothers, I think, or something like that. And it provides basically a noodle stand out of the bus stop. The bus stop seems fitting right there by the commercial area of the shopping plaza. You can see the three shops of the shopping plaza there. Two two-story buildings and one one-story building. It's a Fallon's Express, which is like a boutique version, clothing-only version of a Fallon's, not a full department store. There's a gardening center slash nursery slash hardware shop. Uh, and then there's a an arcade that was there for the kids. Now this triangular area of ground with the Minuteman statue that's between the shopping plaza and this, the bridge over to Sanctuary, between the road and the, what I call, River's Edge walkway, which is uh, along the retaining wall here, I call this Minuteman Park, this triangular area of ground, but mainly because of the Minuteman statue that comes there with the vanilla. Now you can see I put some lighting along there, makes it for a nice nighttime walkway. What I did when I first started this settlement, before I even started building hardly anything, I went around all the settlement build area and gathered all the fallen trees and logs and everything and pulled them all over here with the intention of making this a wood chopping area. You can see the cords of wood stacked against the side of the building there and an ax in a stump here. The intent of this is to provide firewood during the colder months of the, of the year for the settlers who live here at the Red Rocket settlement. So that worked out pretty well. The sanctuary shops, let's go ahead and take a look at them specifically now. We got some solar paneling up on top of the arcade as well as a laser turret behind some sandbags. Now, if you were to come into the shopping plaza or the sanctuary shops from the roadway or from the bus stop, essentially you're gonna come in this main entrance more than likely. The main entrance you can see has some nice bench seating and some rose bushes and some planters against the bottom of the parking garage walls there. And then there is a tree that is nicely planted and well maintained right here in the middle of the pavers, the brick pavers walkway here. There's a newspaper stand over there by the stairs and then a garbage can and a mailbox over here by this bench. And then you're looking at the plaza itself, the main area with the fountain in the middle, though the fountain's not working. And then there's a Vim vending machine off to the side of the Fallons as well. In the main plaza, if you came in that way, then to your right would be the Fallons Express, which is, like I said, a mini version of Fallons. Before we go inside the building, we're going to take a look around the outside real quick. You can see that they even have some signage here on the side, up high, and that's so that the any of the customers who come and park in the shopping plaza parking garage or the adjacent parking garage I should say would be reminded that there's a Fallon's there in case they were going over to Drumlin Diner or something instead there's a dumpster back here behind behind the Fallon's which I'll go into more of the purposes of the dumpsters and the garbage system for the settlement in my Drumlin Diner video you can see by the small windows of the base of the Fallon's that there's a small room here and then there's a stairway coming down here that would lead to the retaining wall river's edge walkway although that portion of the river's edge walkway was obviously destroyed at least in the post-war environment now if we come in come down here you can see that there is an electrical access and a small electrical room 
that provides the initial power for the shopping plaza, uh, in addition to those solar panels that are on top of the arcade. Just some safety signage, a couple of generators, and a console to control the generators. Nothing big. But then if we go back outside, then you'll see the, like I said, we're going to go up the stairway. This access stairway right here. And there's also signage here, by the way, that is visible from Sanctuary Hills for those you know, customers to be able to see all the time. We come up this stairway. We come across the Fallon's to our left now. In these first two windows, we have men's mannequins displaying current men's fashion. And then on the windows on the right side of the doorway are the ladies' mannequins displaying current ladies' fashions. And then if we were to go inside the shop and take a look at the sales floor, you'll see it. while the structure itself hasn't really been repurposed, considering it was a clothing store pre-war, it obviously displays more post-war fashions and stuff now. But the upstairs has been repurposed because that was mainly stock room and manager's office and employee restroom. Manager's office and employee restroom are still up there, but the stock room has been repurposed. It's now living quarters for the clerk and the manager who live here in the structure. All of their stock is down on the sales floor. They don't have enough extra to be upstairs. They consider themselves just a clothing store despite the fact that they have some armor pieces here. That's mainly just because they've taken trade in the past or just come across some items and of course they want to sell them. They also note sell towels and other linens as well here. So that's why some of the beds have sheets throughout the settlement or or like I said towels and such. And you can see there's a ample display of clothing on clothing racks and shelves. You got a customer over here perusing their wares. And then if we go upstairs, as I said, the stock room has been repurposed into a living area for the clerk and the manager. So you'll see that this once open area has been divided by some plywood partitions. They specifically made a partition of some plywood planks here and balanced it on a couple of the old clothing racks to provide a wall between the two living areas. This first one is the manager's living area. He likes his paintings of animals and he likes books and such. And he has a good view of the lake and across to Sanctuary Hills. And then in the other living area for the clerk, you have uh, her Kim's on the floor and she likes paintings of landscapes. And she has a good view of the shopping plaza. And then through this doorway here is the employee restroom. It's just a dirty version of its pre-war design, basically. And then right outside we have the water cooler for the two of them. And then through the red door here is the manager's office. And you can see the manager diligently plugging away on his typewriter, working, probably making some kind of memo or a TPC fax cover sheet or something. And he's plugging away in front of his favorite poster there. He's got a radiator because it, radiator because it gets cold in here. He's got a garbage can and a safe and some file cabinets. Normal business stuff. And then if we move on from the Fallons, we're going to go next door to the Commonwealth Farm Supplies, which is combination nursery slash gardening center and hardware store. You can see the greenhouse windows that I did implemented into the design on the left side there and that's to provide ample sunlight for the plants that they have inside. We come in through the doorway we see the couple that runs the Commonwealth Farm Supplies and you know one's just man on the counter the other's sweeping up gotta to try to keep it clean and we have some shopping baskets here on the left for customers and the shelves right here in the front are mainly full of some hardware and, and tools and basic supplies like that and then we get into the gardening portion and the nursery portion in the later part of the store over here by the windows to include a pallet of fertilizer and some baskets of carrots and various gardening tools and implements. Now the sales floor in the pre-war environment, you could observe down onto the sales floor from up above by looking over that railing you can see up there. But, and you still kind of can on the right side, but the left side you can see has some wood walls that they've implemented a kind of a temporary wall or a partition and that's because they the couple lives in the upstairs much like the two folks over at the Fallons do but they put a cloth wall dividing over there and here's their pre-war employee bathroom or 
well, I shouldn't say pre-war, I mean, it's still their employee bathroom. Now, both sets of residents at the Fallons and here use the showers down by the river that were identified and I gave a tour of them in the end of the parking garage video for the apartment complex at the parking garage. You can see again how you can look over the railing and they put up these walls here to partition off a bedroom out of what used to be the manager's area. And they use the old manager's desk as a bed. So if we move on from the gardening center, we go to the, the arcade that was here for the children of Sanctuary Hills. Fun Zone Arcade, which is now the Fun Zone Barcade. It's been repurposed. Now this one actually has been repurposed, though it does still have some working video games inside as well. But it's been repurposed into a bar, obviously. If we go inside, we see the bartender standing there ten tending to his bar. We see some out of order video games on the side there and a token machine and a garbage can. And we come to this side, we got the jukebox, a wakakami, and some working video games, and then an out of order pinball game. You can see that the wallpaper is still basically child centric but the posters and everything and the uh, and the other decorations are more geared toward the bar not children per se and he's got his liquor and his booze and everything right right there behind the bar of course as well as a bar menu and then in here would be the bathroom for the bar or previously for the arcade he's got some graffiti on the walls but it's only used during business hours because nobody lives on these premises unlike the other two structures. So heading out of the bathroom, we go through the bar again, and then heading out there, we go back into the plaza. So that's the interior of the three businesses that make up the shopping plaza. You can see the fountain there in the middle as well. It's not working right now as far as the water portion, but it is lit up. And now we're going to actually get a glance at that because we're going to go ahead and take a look at some night shots of the park and the shopping plaza as well. So I hope you'll stick around for that. Here's us approaching the Minuteman Park from the Sanctuary Hills Bridge. And you, see, you can see the retaining wall, River's Edge walkway there lit up along the side and the statue of the Minuteman, of course. Also from here, you can, you know, on the right side, you could have seen the, a second ago, you could have seen the billboard and some spotlights that are lighting up the roadway as well but that's going to be identified or further detailed i should say in a future video but looking at the shopping plaza from the outside you can see the bus stop here the power noodles bus stop that that looks really well occupied and and well lit up of course by the street lights and then as we come into the shopping plaza from the main entrance here you can you can start to see how the lighting uh, is nice for good evening ambiance makes for a nice seating area and of course the courtyard portion of the plaza is well lit up as well and now if we were to take a detailed look inside the structures at night you can see how the Fallons is lit up pretty nicely and then of course right along the front of the windows with the mannequins you can still see them through the through the windows pretty easily at night and then of course the sales floor looks the same no difference other than no customer and no employee right now so nothing of note there same thing with the upstairs living area as well lit because it was a stock room in the evening or i mean in the pre-war excuse me and unfortunately no residents there so we're going to go ahead and move on to the nursery hardware place and take a look in there look at their sales floor at night nice and lit up with the exception of that far corner i guess they have a light bulb out or something so that might be something i have to look into for whatever reason because i know there's power going that way and it was lit up so maybe i just have to reset that light or whatever but it also kind of adds a neat effect to have a light out, I think. And then, of course, there's the upstairs area. But instead of just going up these stairs, I'm just going to show from over the railing. We look inside, and there's their hot plate and their couch. And then their living area partitioned off by their cloth wall and their wood walls. And then we go back out into the 
courtyard area and move over to the fun zone barcade. Now here we should have a little bit of action. There should be some folks inside. And there are. There's a couple of customers enjoying the barcade. Just sitting around. Now oh, there's the dock joining the crew. You can see how it was lit up for, a bar for an arcade, I should say, in its pre-war environment. So they even used the video games. But I mean, the colors are kid-friendly. The wallpaper's kid-friendly. The posters, not so much. You know. We have a very aggressive bartender. He likes to practice his quip draw for some reason. Uh, and he doesn't even care if he does it right in front of customers. And that's pretty much wraps it up uh, for this portion. Drumlin Diner should be the next video. I'm mostly done with that. I really hope you guys all enjoyed this and enjoy the level of detail that I'm putting into, into all this stuff. I like building the structures personally and the detail of the decorations is what slows me down. So I'm not a super prolific video producer but if you do like this and you like you know this level of detail and the amount of effort i'm putting into it please smash the like button comment below as well it, positive or negative i'll take any comments you know i appreciate them all definitely and also subscribe if you haven't and you'll get notified obviously when new ones come out i hope you enjoyed it thanks for sticking with me throughout the entirety of it enjoy have a good one take care